please excuse the introduction to this video. I do not have any video editing software and I don't have time to fiddle around with that in my lifestyle. This video is about playing the opposite gender of whatever you were born as in an RPG. Uh, it's kind of a thorny subject. But basically all of the problems associated to it come from the same things. Uh, immaturity, just you're childish. So you don't really have the maturity, the experience, the interactions with other people to understand anything about the opposite gender. Uh, fear, just <laughs> being too afraid to possibly offend people uh, is one of the main driving factors. And of course, being just a juvenile little prick is the other problem. And there's a lot of juvenile little pricks in role-playing games. Sadly, luckily it seems in the, last, in the last few years, people have been making an effort to do something about it, finally. So, the subject. You want to play the opposite gender. How? Let's start with why, like the person I'm replying to. Why do you want to play the opposite gender? If you want to play the opposite gender in order to carry out some sort of power fantasy or something like that, like you're going to play the slutty female elf or uh, you're some chick and you're going to play as the womanizing jerk character based off that one ex-boyfriend you had a year ago, don't. Unless you are really serious about playing a meaningful character whose gender has something important to do with that character, don't. Meanwhile, if you're going to play as a character who's the opposite gender and their gender really doesn't play much of a role in who they are, why? Don't bother. It's easier to just not even bother with it. But. If you are playing a character and their gender plays a major role in who they are, then you need to answer a few things. Are you playing the opposite gender to try and experience something more of what it would be like to be that gender, or maybe to understand the opposite gender better? If that's the case, I would recommend possibly taking psychology. <laughs> it's a better way to explore that kind of thing than just pretending to be a girl and rolling dice. Uh, if it's to say something about gender identity, like to convey a message through your character about the subject, then that might be, that might be worthwhile. If it's a message worth hearing. If you're just going to convey a message about how women should be meek, uh, little servants, or how men should be the only ones allowed to be doctors or some other silly thing. Again, don't do that. But if you're going to talk about, let's say, uh, what would it mean? Like, let's say you're a female and you want to explore what does it mean to be a male who desperately wants to have a child but grew up in a culture where, in order to have a child, you need to be married under a god he doesn't believe in. That's a great character concept! That would be wonderful! As long as it doesn't overtake the main story of the adventure or whatever. But as long as your character... As long as their character's gender is relevant to their backstory and how they make decisions and why they make decisions, their hopes, their fears, etc. like that, that's fine. It has to be a defining aspect of who they are. You need to understand why it's a defining aspect of who they are. And you need to use that to impact the way you make your decisions in play. You can't use it to overrun the play, overrun the other players with, Hey, I'm a girl, guys! No, don't do that. All right. So... What are the actual differences between males and females? First off, let's talk about biology because that's the easiest thing to talk about. And I think, I personally think that's the only thing that actually is different between male and female. 
biologically, all men are female. We start out as female, and then our mother's wombs, biochemistry slowly but surely changed us into a male. It's a chemical pro process, mostly, that defines whether or not you're going to be male or female. There's certain markers in the DNA which change the probability of you being male or female, but ultimately it's the development process itself that decides. So, right from the start, we're all female. Some of us become male. Okay? Obviously, that's not something that's subconsciously known by us, otherwise we probably treat women a hell of a lot better. <sighs> but it's true. Once we are born, though, the differences between male and female are not particularly distinct, again, until a development process goes through. A male child, a male baby looks pretty much identical to a female baby, except the parents put them in different colored clothing. <laughs> there have been many occasions where I went, oh, he's so adorable, she's a she, I'm, she's adorable. My wife avoids this by calling the children it, that is even more rude, just so you know. Uh, but yeah, it isn't until they start to develop a voice, for example, where their voice starts to take on a different tone. And then later on, when uh, the boys hit their growth spurt and hair grows in different places and all that other sex ed stuff. Okay? It's the development process it's the development process that determines whether you're a male or a female, really. That shows whether you're a male or a female. And notice that I'm saying male and female as a biological term. I'm not saying male as in men are manly and women are womenly. That's that's masculinity and femininity, and we'll get to that. So, once you're born and you're developing and you're growing and you're experiencing the world, the only difference between men and women is that women can have children and men cannot. That seems like it's not very much, but really that's the only meaningful difference. But that difference means a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. More than people seem to realize. And I'm almost, like, I'm a man and I'm almost offended by how trivially people take that point. Oh, these people can have children and those people can't. So what? So what? Okay, from the male perspective first, because I'm male. Fish, stop killing each other. Because I am male. I could, if I were a douchebag, go around and have meaningless flings with dozens of women. And just because I don't like condoms, or I'm too lazy or something like that, I could go unprotected and have sex with a dozen women, don't even care about them, don't even learn their names. There's guys who do that. Lots of guys who do that. My camera is shaking because it's on a table that is apparently not as stable as I thought. There's lots of guys who do that. Here's the thing that you need to know about that. There's a chance 20 years down the line, a guy like that could get a knock at the door, and there'd be some guy standing there going, Hi. I think you're my dad. Holy shit, what? That would never happen to a woman, because they have to experience the pregnancy and the childbirth, or more horrifyingly, the abortion, if you're willing to allow your campaign to include that subject. But you, it's pretty hard to hide that a woman had a child from that woman. It's very easy to hide from a man that he has a child. And there are lots of great stories from history, things that actually happened, where an illegitimate child was hidden specifically because they were the illegitimate, ch illegitimate child of someone important. And that illegitimate child became a big, big problem. That doesn't happen to women. <laughs> Typically in those stories it was the woman who hid the child as a way of attaining power for themselves when that child comes forward and goes, technically I'm the rightful heir to the throne. What you gonna do about it? Uh, or something along those lines. And there's also examples of people coming forward pretending to be your illegitimate child. 
Again, that doesn't happen to women. You can't really walk up to someone and be to, up to a woman and be like, "Hi, I'm your son." No, you're not. My son lives in Amsterdam. I've, I, he, I just called him last week. You're not my son. You can't do that unless unless their child has been missing for a long time and they haven't seen him since he was 11 and it's been 20 years then maybe if you can pass a resemblance and maybe have met the guy once or twice and can imitate him maybe you could pull it off but that's that's what i mean that's a different kind of story entirely that's much more complicated and the fact that you can have children or not changes the way you make decisions about relationships you have. A lot of guys feel that most women are kind of cold because a lot of guys are actually deep down inside rather cold and they only feel rather mechanical real sort of things towards other people like lust and that kind of stuff. Uh, so they get rejected and they feel like a lot of women are just kind of, they don't care or they don't value relationships very much. But in all actuality, women value relationships more than those kinds of guys because they choose their relationships more carefully. Because they have to. Particularly in settings in the past where having a child could have a massive impact on a woman's life as opposed to the man's life. Uh, it would change the way they make decisions about relationships, who they spend time with, why they make uh, those relationships. And while it may not seem as though every guy she chose not to date in the past has anything to do with the way Captain Janeway uh, makes decisions about how to operate her starship, the fact remains that every decision you make, whether it's regarding a relationship or your job or machines or anything like that, changes the way you make decisions about other things. Every decision you make is an example of your decision-making process and is you practicing your decision-making process. So the kinds of decisions you've had to make in the past will change the way you approach decisions in the future. And this is why women make goals and approach problems in a different way than men, fundamentally because they had to make relationship decisions in the past differently than the way men make relationship decisions in their past. And the solutions they came to those decisions define a lot about who they become. So a woman who does make really frivolous decisions with her relationships and does have lots of flings with other guys that says something about her decision-making process, about what she cares about, what, what she thinks. That's a different kind of person than the woman who, fearing the possible consequences of having a child out of wedlock, cuts off all contact with males. That's a different kind of thought process, a different kind of decision-making process, and it will change the way ma they make decisions in the future. That matters! That's why I think that a lot of RPGs, particularly video game RPGs, are guilty of this recently, but tabletop RPGs are just as bad for it. They avoid the subject of sexuality and gender and sex and children in general to the point where there are no children, where nobody has parents, where no one has children, no one has, if they have brothers and sisters, they don't explain where those, those brothers and sisters came from. Uh, Bethesda was really bad for it. People railed on them for this. Uh, they got away with it from, with Morrowind because the technology was just getting to the point where you could do stuff like this. Uh, but with Oblivion, where the hell were all the children? Every single person in that world was like your main character. No real backstory, except for like, uh, the king, whose backstory doesn't even really describe where he himself came from, just where his family came from. And even then, family only really matters in regards to that one plot line. Everyone in that world is just this living abstraction. And it came across as being really artificial. And when we as game masters create worlds and adventures where the subject of 
reproduction and offspring and sex and gender and all this other stuff is absent because we're afraid to step on people's toes or because we're just uncomfortable with the subject and we're not mature enough to handle it. Uh, we're creating a really artificial environment for our players to play in and it comes off as very artificial and I think that single thing that single sense of pervasive everywhere these people are created comes from the fact that there is no sense of where these people came from how they persist in the world or what they're planning for when they die there's no sense of mortality there's no sense of continuum and that's what sexuality ultimately means culture wise it, it's about mortality it's about the continuity of our civilization of our species Without that subject in mind, either you have a world full of mortals that will one day be empty, or a world full of Ill immortals who are, afraid, who are simply afraid of being killed or hurt. Both of which are kind of artificial and strange. How can you have hope in a world without children? Everyone's going to die. Uh, and that will be the end of it. Uh, yeah. How can, how can a world grow if there's never any new people? How can a world change if the only new people that come into existence are just the player characters? And now we get into culture. You cannot just say, nature, in regards to nature versus nurture, as to what makes a person who they are, you can't just say, oh, that was just their upbringing. Oh, that's just a cultural artifact of, in their personality. You can't just say, oh, that's just culture. Culture defines pretty much everything about who you are. It's not just culture. Let me put an example specifically relating to uh, the whole topic of childbirth and gender and all that stuff from reality that has that describes how a culture impacts how people feel about their gender China had and still has a population crisis there's lots of people there they have a big problem a very big problem their economy cannot support their population they are overpopulated it's a big big problem it's been getting better. It's been getting better primarily because of an extremely unpopular decision that their government made, which was to limit the number of children you could have. That, coupled with the pre-existing civilizational values of who you could have children with and when, had a huge impact on the, who, what, what people were like. Suddenly you had a culture where if a person had a child out of wedlock, the government would kidnap your child. That's terrifying. What's more terrifying is that government happened to be corrupt. And a lot of those children, because the government didn't need them, got sold into sex slaves. Or just as slaves. How freaking beautiful. If you were growing up in such a society and you found out that if you had a child out of wedlock that child would be taken to you and sold to some old man to rape as they see fit and the only way you can have a child that they won't take from you is to marry this guy who's basically going to do the same thing to you that your family chose for you before you were born how would that change the way you think about your identity, your culture, your world, everything. Children even. That changes who you are. Compare that to America. If you have a child out of wedlock, there is a extraordinarily complex system of laws to determine who has ownership of the child, and an even more complex system of laws which can be used to contest it. Wow. That's a different world. That's a different worldview. Children have different meanings. Relationships have different meanings. 
and those meanings are defined by which gender role you fit into in that culture. That, that's a big deal. And speaking of gender roles, they are nowhere near as simple as people make them out to seem. Often the topic goes to, oh, in hunter-gatherer times, men were the hunters and women were the blah, blah, blah. Horse shit. If you only had five people in your tribe, and a couple of them were girls, and you needed to eat, everybody's hunting. Pragmatism. It comes down to pragmatism, not gender. In that, I'm pretty sure that cavemen did whatever it took to survive. They did not give a fuck <laughs> what gender you were. Uh, but pro possibly in the pre-civilizational stage, before writing came into existence, when people were just starting to do agriculture and stuff, maybe you would have the men were the hunters, women were the take care of the children, stuff like that. But let's look at gender roles in more modern societies, or even just more advanced societies. Let's talk about Greek gender roles. People talk about how, oh, the Greeks, men were the only ones allowed to vote, and women were treated like chattel, and blah, blah, blah. It's not as simple as that. Throughout Greek history and into Roman history, the male gender role changed quite a lot. In early history, they were pretty much warriors. The gender role of men was hunter-warrior. Later on, they became politicians and mathematicians. Further on, they became poets and philosophers. At some point, women became philosophers. At some points, women were actually educated. In a few instances, women of certain status were actually allowed to vote. And it also depended on where in Greece you were. Certain areas had different uh, value, er, different gender roles associated to men. An Athenian man was very different from the men of other cities. That's why Athens is so interesting. It's not because that's how all Greece was. It's because they were unique in that gender role was so different. And even in our society, modern society from the 1950s, to 2016. Gender roles for men and females have changed at least, at least 15, 20 times a piece. And the way those gender roles have changed, depending on whether you were in Canada or the United States or Britain or Germany or Russia, what is acceptable, what is socially acceptable, what is legally acceptable depends on gender sometimes. And that changes over time. That matters. That defines who you are. And that defines who your character is. How your society deals with problems regarding gender and childbirth and all these other things. And how your character reacts to those decisions and those situations created by those decisions defines who your character is. So, if your character is going to be of the opposite gender, you need to find out a lot more about the game you're going to be playing in. Because you're going to need to find out how the culture they grew up in deals with the issues of childbirth, population, sexuality, relationships, morals, ethics, all of it. Do you live in a society that doesn't value children. Let's say you're a female kobold and, you're, and your kobold civilization takes all their children and throws them in a big pit. And every day they throw a pile of meat in the pit and then the pit is dug just deep enough so that once the children reach maturity, they're tall enough and strong enough to climb their way out. And that's how they become part of society. Your values are going to be very different from a female elf who had to carry her child in pregnancy for 50 freaking years. And then that child mooches off of you for 135 years. Admittedly, a year is not much in your worldview, but that's a very different situation. This is why gender matters. And this is how to play gender, not by 
following stereotypes or looking into psychology or asking other people. You play the opposite gender by figuring out what actually is different. You can have children or you can't. And figuring out how your society deals with problems associated to that. And then deciding what your character thinks of it. It's that simple. That's how you handle it with maturity and understanding. And that's how you make a more interesting character through gender. And it's perfectly acceptable for gender to not matter to your character. Most people are not impacted that much by their gender. Some people are. For some people, gender identity is a very big part of their identity. I identify very strongly as male, but a very different type of male than what a lot of people think of. I think of myself more as the intellectual type of male, the, the mathematician, polymath kind of person. And there is a separate gender identity for a highly intelligent polymath kind of woman. There are different role models there, different examples of it in history and society. That's all I have to say about the subject. Again, no editing software.